millions of Americans buy insurance from agents who go door to door. But as Matt Mahar's undercover investigation shows, when you let some of these salesmen into your home, you may be opening the door to trouble. Our hidden cameras found deceit and abuse that will disgust you. And a warning, some of the language you'll hear is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little baby. Yeah. This is how door-to-door -door insurance salesman Bill Dollarhide talks to his customers when he's pressuring them to buy overpriced policies they most likely can't afford in the first place. Well, I ain't never seen the address. But this is how Dollarhide talks about his customers after he's charmed them out of their money. You do what it takes. Get by with these niggers. Make her feel good. Ugly as a stump, gap-toothed nigger with glitter all over. Jesus Christ. Bill Dollarhide sells life and fire insurance and collects premiums by going door to door in Little Rock, Arkansas. He works for the Chicago-based United Insurance Company of America, one of the largest companies in the $3 billion home service insurance industry. He's sure to need life insurance the same as his dad. So let's start his program now. Decades ago, that's how lots of Americans bought insurance. Today, to most of us, the concept seems very outdated. We use the phone to shop around for insurance. We pay by check through the mail. But 14% of Americans all across the country still buy insurance sold door to door. Most of them live in neighborhoods like this one. They're typically poor and not very well educated as consumers. Did you think at the time you bought these that these were going to be a pretty good deal? Well, then I did. Willie Thompson pays United Insurance $34 a month for two life insurance policies. Since 1978, Thompson's paid in more than $6,300. But when he dies, his heirs will get just $2,000. This is the most expensive product a person can buy. And the benefit for dollar is as, as low as it gets. Insurance regulators like Arkansas's Ron Sheffield have been trying for years to expose unscrupulous practices in the home service insurance industry, but with little success. We reviewed consumer complaints against companies around the country. To investigate, we sent Inside Edition researcher Miguel Sancho to get a job in the Little Rock office of United Insurance. We later equipped him with a hidden camera. But I want my money in at 10 o'clock bar nothing. I'm not going to wait on you any longer. The pressure to sell new policies is immense. Here, Agent Dollarhide is coaxing a mother to buy a fire insurance policy she later told us she definitely couldn't afford. That's the best buy for you. But Dollarhide is so intent on leaving with the money, she eventually turns over her children's piggy bank. Watch as he uses a coat hanger to fish out the children's money, dollar by dollar. One reason I probably forgot to put this on another page. Here's United Agent Alan Gibson, collecting from Annie Carpenter. Since the 1940s, she's paid more than $3,000 for a life insurance policy that will pay her survivors just $500. He won't tell her, but Agent Gibson knows it's a lousy deal. Mm -hmm. paying her more she's going to get. It's sad. That's one reason home service is the most profitable insurance there is for the companies that sell it. Most of them are awful deals, especially compared to what you could get. Robert Hunter, former Texas insurance commissioner, says most door-to-door -door customers don't know how badly they're being taken advantage of. A woman came to me with a home policy. She was getting $1,500 of life insurance with it. We qualified her. We worked with her. Got her qualified with a good company. She gets $75,000 with the exact same payment. But as our man quickly learned, the problem with home service insurance goes far beyond expensive policies. The key element is when in doubt, get the money. <laughs> Sales manager Bill Dollarhide, assigned to train our undercover researcher, taught him the tricks of the trade. Some of them, although illegal, are relatively harmless, like a technique called pork chopping. Here, Dollarhide is buying some meat to reward one of his best customers for a referral. That's a pork chop clothes. You give me a name of somebody, and I go see him and write him and do business with him. I'll bring you back pork chops. But it's not just pork chops Dollarhide uses to soften up his customers. With this woman, it was narcotics. You want to do business with me? Yeah. Nice lady. Drug, cracked out. 
I bought her a nickel bag one time. But Agent Dollarhide's huge appetite for writing policies goes way beyond giving away pork chops and a nickel bag. He blatantly lies, cheats, and steals from his customers. The people think it was issued in October, but it was really issued in November. And they don't know the difference. What he was teaching our trainee is an outlawed practice called blinding. The agent tricks a client into paying additional premiums in advance. The extra cash is called plus money. Tell him to come in. This is Ida Hughes. She pays United about $55 every month for life and fire insurance. In October, Dollar Hyde conned her into overpaying her fire insurance by almost a full month. In November, she let us set up hidden cameras in her kitchen when Dollar Hyde came to do it again. Now, how much you owe me? Now, I don't really keep up with it that much. I know what I've been paying a month. It's 547. But she really owed only 47 cents. Dollar Hyde had explained it all back at the office. And that's all she really owed to pay the next month. But we're not going to turn that. We'll just keep getting our regular dollars. So where do Dollar Hyde and agents like him hide the extra dollars? Sometimes they just pocket them. That's where that extra money was. That's where it was. We should split that. But the most common scam by agents who steal is to use the plus money to pay other customers premiums, guaranteeing themselves a steady flow of commissions. That's what Dollar High did with Asa and Pinky Phillips, who couldn't afford that month's premium. Oh, if you'll come over here, Miss Phillips, it shows right here, last paid 1110. That means I put $67.37 on your policy last Friday. See that? Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. That's my money. That's not his money. That's plus money. Money Dollar Hyde scammed out of other customers. He also explained how he uses it illegally to get fat upfront commissions by paying the first month's premium for new customers. I should have put $20 in your pocket. You could buy a new piece of business on somebody that they'll keep and think you're a hell of a nice guy and you make eight times on instead of 20, you know, you made 160. But he even lies about that. He told this family that he'd pay their first month's premium. The family thinks they're insured. But in fact, Dollar Hyde has no intention of even submitting their application until they've started paying. It's a sale, you understand? That's all we're doing is sell it. But you said you were going to pay for the... I lied like a dog. I ain't going to pay for that. Remember United Agent Alan Gibson? Here he is persuading Christella Owens to buy fire insurance, something she already has. We got a good special going on, and I'm not going to let you miss this special because it's a special that's not going to ever be back on. Gibson saying she'll save 50 percent, but only if she buys right now. Well, I'll try. You going to try? Yes. Okay. In the elevator of her public housing project. Gibson tells the truth. Right. We wouldn't have no sale. Yeah. We weren't. Uh -huh. <laughs> we wouldn't no sale, but she don't know that. Willie Ross, United's Little Rock District Manager, warned our researcher about picking up the bad habits of other agents. But then, Ross admitted to overcharging clients himself. When I go in the house, you guys don't know what they owe, I always tell them they owe twice what they owe. Ross loves bragging to his young trainees. But he wasn't nearly as talkative with me. Can we talk to you for one second, please? Bill Dollarhide didn't have much to say either. Do you take advantage of these people and try to confuse them? Never. No? You've never lied no to comment. any of these people? No comment. We repeatedly tried to discuss what we had found with United's corporate officials in Chicago, but they wouldn't talk to us either. So we went to see company president Richard Vai. Could we talk to you about it? No. I know in my heart of hearts that these things happen and that the industry knows they happen, but the industry is always going to say, we do the best we can. Well, that may not be good enough. Unfortunately, the problem isn't just with the United Insurance Company of America and its Little Rock office. About 100 companies sell policies door to door in every state in the union, and experts tell us that consumers all over the country are being taken advantage of. I couldn't keep it up. Couldn't pay that $300. Then that's where the trouble started. Lizzie Bolden trusted her agent from American General Insurance in Bessemer, Alabama. But now, Bolden says, he tricked her into buying a dozen life insurance policies costing $309 a month, more than half of her income. 
When her daughter discovered the policies, she sued the company. They uh, built up this relationship with uh, these people so that the elderly will feel safe in giving them money. They're wolves, they're snakes. American General Life and Accident Insurance Company has a fine reputation in the industry for honesty and integrity. American General spokesperson Celeste Anderson couldn't comment on the Bolden lawsuit because it's still pending. Attorneys for the company and the agent say the lawsuits are meritless, that Bolden was fully aware of what she was buying, and the policies met industry standards. If it comes to our attention that any of our agents engage in any activity which our policyholders find questionable, we take immediate action to address their concerns. But Robert Hunter says the problems are industry-wide, and few companies are doing enough about it. The unethical and illegal practices are so rampant that they must be uh, accepted by the, the companies themselves. And, and that's the problem. They call them rogues when they're caught, but while, when they, they love it while they're producing income. I don't do anything for anybody unless it helps me. I'm a salesman. I'm obligating those people. That's what I do. Not all door-to-door -door insurance salesmen are deceitful, and all policies are not bad deals. But it's always wise to shop around, and if you think you've been victim, victimized, you should call your state insurance commission. Coming up, a new book that will make an incredible claim about the Princess of Wales and the woman who finally got O.J. Simpson to publicly confront the evidence.